With the D-Day for default less than four weeks away, President Obama had congressional leaders to the White House today to try to get the negotiations moving again. We have reports tonight from Nancy Cordes at the Capitol and Chip Reed at the White House. Scott, the president called today's meeting with congressional leaders constructive, but he also said the two sides are far apart on a wide range of issues. I thought that all the leaders here came in a spirit of uh, Compromise. It was a dramatic change in tone compared to just last week when the president gave Congress a stern lecture. You stay here. Let's get it done. White House officials, though, say there was no major breakthrough in today's meeting, and the president said the hard bargaining is still ahead. Everybody acknowledged that uh, there's going to be pain involved. Uh, politically uh, on all sides. The White House concedes the pain will have to include steep cuts and entitlement programs popular with Democrats. Sources say even Social Security is now on the table, prompting House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi to fire a warning shot. Do not consider Social Security a piggy bank for giving tax cuts to the wealthiest people in our country. But budget expert David Walker says Social Security is the easy part. In basketball terms, it's like a layup. On the other hand, Medicare, Medicaid, and our broader health care challenges are more like a three-point play from underneath the opponent's basket. Now the people around this table, eight congressional leaders, the president, vice president, and a handful of White House officials led by Chief of Staff William Daley, have to reach a deal or risk sending the economy plunging back into a second deep recession. The key relationship is between the president and House Republican Speaker John Boehner. Sources say the two men have had a series of private discussions on the debt deal that began nearly three weeks ago during a round of golf. Scott, the next step is that over the next two days, White House and congressional staff members will put together specific proposals to cut up to $4 trillion over the next decade. Then on Sunday, the president and congressional leaders will meet again here at the White House, and that's when the hard bargaining will really begin. Chip, stand by there at the White House as we switch over to the Capitol now and congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes. Scott, for the first time today, we started to hear lawmakers express some confidence that a debt deal could be reached and an economic crisis averted. After returning from the White House, Speaker Boehner put the chances of a deal at 50-50. Rank-and-file Republicans like Florida Senator Marco Rubio were sounding more positive, too. I think there is growing consensus here on some of the outlines of what it will take to solve this issue. But the price of a so-called grand bargain will be too high for some. Publicly, many Republicans continue to balk at any mention of tax hikes. Raising taxes are not going to get any votes on, uh, on our side at this point. But privately, some Republicans now say they might be able to support closing some tax loopholes. The White House wants to eliminate loopholes for oil and gas companies, limit deductions for high-income Americans, and eliminate what's called the carried interest provision, which allows some investment managers to pay a 15 percent rate on their hefty earnings instead of the traditional 35 percent. The challenge for negotiators is to find consensus on all these contentious matters immediately. The Treasury Secretary's deadline of August 2nd gives both sides just three weeks to strike a deal, draft legislation, sell it to members, and vote. That's why the White House scheduled the next big meeting with congressional leaders for Sunday, just three days from now, Scott. Nancy, even if a deal is reached, it would take a couple of weeks to get a bill through the legislative process. Are they already getting close to missing this deadline? Oh, they absolutely are, Scott. And that's why I think the understanding here on Capitol Hill is that if they can't come up with a deal in the next week or so, they're going to have to start crafting a short-term measure to avert a debt crisis for a couple of days or weeks as they continue to negotiate. It's a tactic that they used a few months ago when they were trying to avoid a government shutdown. And Chip, at the White House, is the White House insisting on cuts in Social Security? No, they are not, Scott. The White House says Social Security is on the table for discussion simply because everything has to be on the table for discussion, but they are not pushing hard for cuts in Social Security as part of this deal. Thank you both very much. You know, the United States has never defaulted on its debts, but we were wondering today whether it's ever come close, and it turns out that it has. It was during the War of 1812 after the British burned the Capitol building and the White House. America was struggling to pay for the war, 
but came through in the end.